everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing my testimony. It's going to start off kind of slow and everything builds up to like my senior year basically. I've always grown up in a Christian family. My great grandfather had his own church. You know, my grandmother always went to church. Mom always went to church. My dad didn't really, but when I was born, we started going to church. We went to church with my grandmother in Abbott. Um, and I remember doing that for a while. And then we went to a family worship center where some of my family still goes. Um, and then we kind of, we all, my whole family kind of stopped. Just me, my mom, and my dad. So that's like the background of it, I guess. Throughout this video, I'm going to be showing examples and things because, I don't know, I feel like I need to put out there what was really going on because I feel like some people <laughs> just need to see the change, I guess. So I'm gonna be doing that. I don't really want to, but I feel like I should. It was after my sixth grade year, my mom and I, just her and I moved to Dover. Um, her and my dad separated for a little bit and that was really hard for all of us. I, I remember having to start at a new school in seventh, starting seventh grade. So that was, really hard because middle school is already hard enough and having to start at a whole new school and I was pretty shy I guess so like the thought of having to make new friends and all that just seemed like a lot <laughs> so that was the first time that I remember feeling like the anxious feeling ever I'm pretty sure I probably did before that but that was the first time that it really consumed everything so I remember that was the first time that I really ever prayed because my parents weren't together. I wanted them to stay together. I was starting at a new school. Um, it was just a really hard time. So I felt like that was the first time I remember actually being like real needs instead of like being a little kid and being like, I want that Barbie, Jesus, give me that Barbie, you know? The end of that summer was when mom and I first started attending Charleston Church. It was the summer of 2013, so I was only 12. On Christmas time of 2013, I remember that's when my parents, like my dad started coming to Dover and spending the night and then eventually they got back together and they're fine now, like we're Gucci, everything's good, so. So high school started in 2015 and I, that was another anxious time for me. And I don't know why, because by then I already had a ton of friends. I was on the cheering team. I like established myself, you know? So it was just like a change, I guess, that stressed me out. I remember my first day of high school literally being terrified. We had step up day. I went and toured the school twice that summer. Um, I knew my counselor. I basically knew most of my teachers already. Um, it was just a change that I was scared of. So. so jumping to 2016, the summer of 2016, I actually made the decision to get saved at Charleston on June 12th. Later on that summer in August, I think, I went to Soul Fest with my cousins. And that was a really cool experience. It's really fun. I highly recommend going. Um, then sophomore year started and my anxiety started to um, become more of a daily thing, not just like a situational thing. With all the anxiety and stuff, I started to push away from like my schoolwork, my family, um, my friends, and definitely church was a big one that I started to like, I would go, but it wasn't like I was paying attention or I wasn't super into it like I had been the summer before that. I did still get baptized on July 30th of 2017 with both my parents and that was really cool, but I wish I like was more into it at that time instead of just doing it because my parents wanted me to or like were like, let's just get baptized. And I was like, okay. <laughs> It wasn't because I really wanted to, but I did it anyway, and it was a super awesome experience to do with my parents. I'd been going to that church already for a super long time. I knew everyone. I knew the pastors. It was just, I don't think I was really that ready for it quite yet. That summer, I went to South Carolina with my best friend, and I started talking to a boy again for like the third time. That was, that's when it started to like get more serious, I guess you could say. August 30th of 2017, I started my junior year. And this is like the year that all my friends started like getting into 
more serious relationships and like having sex and I was like <laughs> okay <laughs> so I went through my first like super hard breakup in November of that year and that just honestly made me mad at God because I was like I've known this kid for so long I thought God put him in my life for a reason I thought that even if we did break up in high school that we'd somehow end up being together and all this. And I was just, I was so mad because I really thought that like, this is the time that it was gonna work and blah, blah, blah. And I, <laughs> no. Thank God cheering came around that year because I I had had it to the tippy top. I, I was struggling really, really bad. And at this point I had no relationship with God. I didn't pray. I barely went to church anymore. I just, I, and thank God cheering because it, it like gave me something to do, gave me something else to think about, gave me something to look forward to. It was just, it, it pulled me back. Um, so cheering ended and my anxiety started to get super bad again. I started to have, go through like the highs and lows. Like I would be super, super high and then super, super low the next day. That's when people started to like notice, be like, okay, you were literally super happy 20 seconds ago and now you're Snapchatting me that you're having mental breakdown. Like what's going on? One of my best friends, Rosie, um, actually was like, you know what, spring break, we're going to New Jersey and we're gonna go shopping and just have a good time, forget about everything, leave everything behind and just go. And I was like, at first, not really sure. It wasn't because I didn't love Rosie and Denise. It was just because I was, you know, ang like anxious about literally everything I did. Thank God I decided to go. That trip made for one, me and Rosie super close. She's still one of my best friends to this day. I don't know what I would do without her. Don't know what I would have done without that trip because I probably would have just sat at home and done absolutely nothing and been miserable. And like, we laughed the entire time. There wasn't one time that I like wasn't happy. We went shopping, we ate a ton of food. Her grandmother um, made me delicious meals. So like, thanks sis. By the end of April, Rosie end actually ended up introducing me to a dude and we got into a relationship. It was my second big relationship, I guess you could call it. I still consider it that. So by summer, my mom and I didn't really have a super good relationship by then because now that I look back, I feel bad because I didn't, didn't know how to explain what was going on with me, so she couldn't help me and I know that's all she wanted to do was just help but like I couldn't express that to her so we were just back and forth constantly and we just were fighting a lot like a lot got to the point where I wanted to move out and I actually asked Rosie if I could move in with her I asked my grandmother if I could move in with her um I talked to Grace my cousin about coming to stay with them it was just it was bad and I remember we got into a huge fight. Her and my dad went somewhere, I don't know where. And that was the first time I went into the fridge and stole a beer. So fun times. Um, so then that relationship I just mentioned a little bit ago ended at the end of August of 2019. So I was with them pretty much all summer. And then after that, my mental health got really, really bad, like dangerously low. It just wasn't it wasn't a good situation at all. I constantly was crying and I constantly wanted to be alone. I didn't want anyone to talk to me, not even my friends. I was just alone all the time, which do not recommend, do not do that. If you're going through a hard time, a breakup, a friend breakup, a parent separation, literally anything in the entire world where you feel sad, do not distance yourself from people, literally surround yourself with people because me being alone was probably one of the worst things that I could have done for myself. And so August 29th, 2018 was my last first day of high school. So whoop whoop, I'm a senior now, you know, I only have one more year of this crap. And that's literally what I was thinking. I was not excited. I went into my first, last first day, just having the thought of, I can't wait to get this over with. Um, so early September, at the beginning of my senior year, that was the first time that I started partying. 
and people were very, very surprised because I was always the person that was like anxious about everything and didn't want to risk getting caught or like my parents finding out or anything like that. So I was just not into it. And all of a sudden I just showed up. And that was the first time I ever drank a beer in front of people. That's the first time I try to jewel. Um, I'm gonna be putting videos in because like I said, I want people to see the change. Um, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but I feel like I need to do that. I spent my whole senior year partying, jeweling, and making a lot of mistakes. At one point, I even tried to convince my mom to let me pierce my nose and put a hoop in. Like that, and that's not a big deal or anything, but like that's a huge deal for me because that was like a whole different vibe for me. Like I'm very like, I wear my two rings, I have my ears pierced and that was like it. So when I brought that up to my mom and like my family, they were like, are you sure? <laughs> I didn't do it, but I really thought about it. Hearing it come and gone, like I partied through that. I, I remember my cheering season, but like not intensely. My whole senior year is a haze because literally almost every single weekend I was drunk like, honestly I, re I really was and at that point i didn't want to see a change yet so if you don't want to see a change it's, you're, it's not gonna happen so it wasn't happening for me yet um by then i literally hadn't been to church in a really long time if i was there it was because my parents literally forced me to go but i barely went maybe once a month and that was it i stopped going like we do altar calls at church sometimes just for like come to the altar and pray for these people or if you have this need I literally wouldn't I would sit in my seat during communion I didn't take communion I just was completely checked out by then and yeah I just wanted to let you guys know where my head's at at this point with church because it all happens all at once by the end of March 2019 I went I finally went to a doctor and she finally was like you know, tell me about everything. She was a natural path doctor too, by the way. Love her, love you sis. You're probably not watching this, but if you are, what's up? So she asked me about what was going on, like why I was sick and all this. And she finally was like, you're ha you have anxiety. You've been having anxiety attack. Those are migraines. This is this, this is that. And like to hear someone like professional say that to me and just not like my mom being like you have anxiety and I was like right because it's so hard to if you know you know it's really hard to put how you feel into words and like explain it to someone who just doesn't have it and I feel like everyone gets anxious and stressed sometimes like if you don't have that daily struggle every day you don't know what it's like and it's really hard to explain it to someone that just doesn't know so for someone to say this is this and this is that um, helped tremendously. I'm gonna make a whole video about that because I was I have been sick since I was in fifth grade and we could not figure out what was going on until we did. So I'm gonna make a whole video about that too, but that's gonna be at a different time. Prom night comes around, okay? And you know, prom, the whole like stereotypical, yeah, that was me. <laughs> it was really bad. And that was one of the nights that like, I don't really remember. Like I remember being in prom, I remember getting ready and all that, but like really hard to explain without literally just saying, I don't remember. <laughs> I have a ton of videos. I'm probably putting them on the screen right now. I don't remember most of them, like at all. And that's horrible. We got pulled over, <laughs> but we got pulled over and I'm completely not sober in the passenger seat. And I start crying because I was literally not sober, like I said, so I'm not in my right head space. And I start crying and I, cause I thought we were going to jail. I literally was holding it in my lap. It was in a cup, but I was holding it in my lap. And she let us go. And I remember being like, okay, this is, this is getting to the point where it's starting to get dangerous for us. By the time I got home after prom, it was 2.30 in the morning. By the time I got my makeup off, it was three. By the time I got my hair unbobby pinned and brushed from the hairspray, it was probably 3.45. So I didn't get into bed till four. And then the next day was a Sunday, which was church, which was mo also Mother's Day, which 
I was definitely not going to be able to get out of because it was Mother's Day and I had to be woken up at 8.30 and it was four. I only got four and a half hours of sleep. So by the time I woke up, I was very hungover and I had to get up and go to church with my grandmother, my mother, my father, my grandfather, my aunt, my two cousins, and just sit in church with loud noises and bright lights. And I was like, why did I do this? <laughs> like now looking back at it, I'm like, you're literally the dumbest human being on the planet. Like you, you couldn't have planned that out a little better. Hello? Like, okay, a week before graduation was actually the last party I went to. And I'm only talking about this because this was the night that I finally told Rosie how I was feeling because it just bubbled out of me. And yeah, I wasn't sober, but she knew. She knew, but for me to actually come out and say it and have me say it, like crying, it, for her to hear it, it, made sense so i got super drunk that night like very 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 drunk and i passed out on the floor for three hours i literally the next day when she was telling me about it i thought i was only on the floor for half an hour but it was three hours oh so i was like it's so mm, she i remember i kept saying to her like i can't do this i can't do this anymore i don't know what i'm gonna do everything's falling apart. I can't do this. I can't do this. And she was just kept saying, let's get you up. Let's get you up. Let's get you into put your pajamas on and get you into bed. And I was, I was probably being mean because I kept, I remember I kept saying to people, don't touch me. Don't touch me. If you touch me, I'm going to throw up everywhere. You just leave me where I am. Let me stay here. And then finally she got, she eventually got me up and got me changed and got me into bed and I didn't sleep that night at all. Yeah, so that was a really hard night. And the next day she took me out with a ton of my friends and we went and got our nails done and she made me feel a lot better because we were graduating the next week and she wanted me to be happy. Okay, so I graduated, woohoo. I was literally just happy to be out of there. High school for some people just isn't their thing and for me, it just wasn't my thing. I think around July of 2019 was when I finally, like everything started to like hit me and I was like, I can't keep living my life, drinking every weekend, jeweling every weekend. Finally, it just all hit me all at once. And I was like, I can't, my poor parents are trying so hard to like get me to realize my friends are. Even though they were like having fun with me, I guess it was still like, they were just having fun, but I was doing it because I was sad and angry and had all these emotions, but they were just doing it to do it. And I wasn't. They knew that me taking a step back would be good for me. July, I remember, or the beginning of August, um, I had a lot of stuff starting to get piled up on me. Like college was starting soon, super anxious about that. Um, my driver's license, still, I still hadn't gotten because I was super nervous about that. And everything was all starting to happen, like needed to happen all at once. And I was freaking out. And that also played a factor in me being like, I can't get drunk every weekend. I have to start focusing. I have to start doing more adult things and all this and so I remember going to the altar just casually one day and Darcy Ward came over and put both my hands in the air and started praying for me. And about 10 minutes after that, Pastor Ward came over to me and started praying for me at the same time as her. And having them both, not even just like your pastors, but like two powerful prayers pray over you is just, you don't know the feeling unless if you've had it done to you like it's incredible and i i don't know where i would be if they didn't do that because that changed everything because when i got home that night i threw away all my jewel pods i threw away the alcohol i had hidden in my closet and then i literally just sat on my bedroom floor and cried to god for like hours about literally everything. I apologized. I said I regretted everything that I did. Like, I know he had all this, like all this was supposed to happen and all this needed to happen for me to get to where I am. 
and it's not that I regret the memories with my friends but like I know that like, we still could have had the same amount of fun without the dueling without the drinking um without whatever else we did or whatever else I did like I don't regret being friends with the people I was friends with because I love I still love them all dearly I would do anything for them if they, any of them reached out to me I would be there for them but we could have had the same amount of fun we had without the booze and without smoking that after I prayed that day I got rid of everything and I really started to I asked my grandmother what book of the bible should I start reading first and she gave that to me she gave me a list of verses that I should start with so I started to really dig into God more I started going to church every single Sunday really getting back into it um and after that like everything all these blessings like started to like fall into my life on August 19th of 2019 I got my license which first try and how because I barely drove so I don't know how that happened but August 28th I had my first day of college which I was literally terrified for. I cried the whole way there and I got there and I had my first class and I was completely fine after that. On September 13th, I got hired at Wills where I also currently work and now I get money constantly coming in. I have something to do. On September 22nd, I got my first car. Olive, she's cute and whatever. And then on September 26th, my boyfriend slid into my DMs and that's how that started. October 5th, we had our first date and then November 15th, he asked me to be his girlfriend. It's just like everything all came together at the same time. You, I, it, it's hard to explain. I've said this a lot this video, but it's so hard to explain how it feels to get things in your life that you know is from God and like you feel like you don't deserve it. Because of all these terrible things I did, I feel like I don't deserve what I have now. Like I just don't and I'm thankful for them. I'm grateful for them and all that jazz, but like I don't deserve it after all the mistakes I've made. I think about my boyfriend who is the biggest blessing I've, I've ever had. He knows about my mistakes and the choices I made and all that and he still looks at me the same way. He's perfect in my eyes and I feel like I don't deserve him and God gave him to me anyway. That's crazy because I could talk about him for hours. He deserved someone better than me, but God was like, nope, this is her, this is her. Like, here you go. He doesn't judge me for what I've done. He doesn't look at me differently for what I've done. He loves all the same things I love. We laugh together. He's my best friend. I never thought that you could have both. Like I thought people would be like, he's my best friend just because they like had to say that. But like, I didn't know that you seriously could have both. He's my best friend and my boyfriend and I get to kiss his cute face. Like me, okay. He's gone to Charleston his whole life and I've been going since I was 12. He only was sitting two sections away from me. It took us this long but it's because God knew that if I found him or like if God put him in my life sooner, we would not have the same future that we have now. You just need to sit, like sit back. God has everything planned out for you, everything. Just like I wrote down all these points for my video, he has it all written down for you too. He knows who you're gonna end up with. He knows how many kids you're gonna have. He knows how many hairs are on your head. It's crazy and it's really hard to think about that everything's planned out already because I was a planner I needed to know everything what I wanted to do but when I gave it to God all these things started happening to me like I said my license college Caleb it just all came together all at once and I'm so thankful for it and I know I don't deserve it but I thank him for it every day and now I pray every day I have someone else to pray for every day I pray for him I pray for his future, I pray for my future, I pray for our future together. I pray for my parents, I pray for my cousins, I pray for my best friends, I pray for everyone. Even if you don't think I like you, I probably am praying for you and that's just how it is. Charleston lately because of the virus happening has been doing live streams 